No, I don't try it out. I can show you. <laughs> right. You want to try it out, you go for real. Yes. There's only way. The most important thing is you have to, the person who learned the martial art, he has to learn each of the mo motion or the principle behind it and the idea of doing it and the reason of doing that particular technique. They took me to uh, another school called St. Francis Xavier. Yep. That's how I start learning Wing Chun. Okay. That was because one of my childhood friends is Bruce Lee. Yep. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to shoot this video because for the first time in my channel, I have my dear Sifu and uh, I'm in Chuhai, China at the moment and I have this opportunity to have a quick conversation and ask him some questions I know many of you have. So let's get straight into it. Sifu, thank you so much for doing this uh, sure. conversation with me. So just for people that may not be aware of your vast experience in Wing Chun, uh, so briefly, could you please tell us when did you get started with your Wing Chun training? Well, uh, at first, when I first uh, got into martial art is when I was uh, seven years old. Right. Uh, after the surgery uh, in Macau, and uh, I was staying in the hospital in and out for nine months. So my body was weak. After so long staying in the hospital, I was a kid then. In Macau, there's not much places for exercise. Right. So my parents took me to uh, learn how to swim. And uh, of course, martial art is one of the choice. Yes. And uh, then I start, fell in love with martial art. It's basically because after nine months in hospital, I cannot catch up with my schoolwork. So uh, I'd be more interested in martial art than study, right. which is very sad, but that was how it happens. Okay. And, uh, and when I get to uh, uh, high school, finished high school, I couldn't graduate, uh, not high school, Primary the school? primary school, yep. I couldn't even graduate. Right. So in Macau, nobody accepts me. So I have to go back to Hong Kong. My parents no other choice. And uh, in Hong Kong, I've been to one or two school. I couldn't catch up. And then finally, they took me to uh, another school called St. Francis Xavier. Yep. That's how I start learning Wing Chun. Okay. That was because one of my childhood friend is Bruce Lee. Yeah. Because my cousin is a movie business and uh, Bruce's father is also a movie actor. Right. And they don't all knew each other very well. And we, my cousin lived very close to him. And uh, that's why uh, we're almost the same age. He's about a year and a half, two years older than me. Right. And uh, he always hang around, hang around with my cousin. That's how we get to know each other. And uh, at that time, those days when they shoot movies, yeah, during the holiday weekends, uh, his father, or my cousin, took us to the, the studio where they shoot the movie, and there's a fight scene coordinator right. there. And uh, he taught him. He never learned any martial art. And I wasn't interested in it because I don't think he's that good. It's mostly uh, stage martial stage arts. Stage fighting, yep. And uh, his father later on find out that he's interested in the martial arts. He said, oh, God, I think you're the real person. <laughs> he has a new uh, good friend in, when he was in Fasan. Right. And he knew that Meat Man was also come to Hong Kong. Those days, uh, a lot of refugees, and he was one of it. Right. And uh, so he took it. His father took him to eat man. Okay. After three months, and he, he started introduce me to eat man. Yep. And uh, that's how it started with Wing Chun. Perfect. Now, what was it like training Wing Chun in the 50s in Hong Kong? Uh, those days, 
there are so many martial arts schools in Hong Kong coming came from China majority. Right. Because after the the, uh, the new China form, yeah. Yeah. and also after the the, uh, the civil war uh -huh. in China, yes, they all escaped to Hong Kong. Right. And a lot of good martial artists from China moved to Hong moved Kong. Moved to Hong Kong. And whether you believe or not, almost every block on the street have a martial arts school. Wow. There are more than 7 Eleven nowadays. <laughs> no, no kidding. You know. And uh, that's how it, that those days in Hong Kong. So then, once you did your training with Sikong, um, I know you went to Australia for, for some time and then you came back, and then eventually you landed in New York City in America yeah. a few years later. Um, what was it like training or teaching in the 70s back in, in the United States? Well, when I first went to the United States, of course, those days are very popular in karate. Uh -huh. Of course, boxing is yes. a Western sport. Yes. And uh, those beginnings like that during the 70s. Uh, of course, judo is, it started with judo after the Second World War in America, according to what they told me. Right. Yeah. But that was going downwards, okay. downhill. Yeah. And the karate is getting more famous. Was Kung Fu popular in the 70s in, in America? Uh, it started popular because uh, Bruce Lee. Uh -huh, the, for the and, uh, movies. Yeah, especially, I was told, most popular in martial art is two places. One in San Francisco. Yes. And uh, another city is New York. Right. A lot right. of uh, immigrants. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. Yeah. And how was it being exposed to all these other martial arts styles influence your experience with your Wing Chun uh, system with uh, uh, yeah training or or having these people come into your school to challenge or to do some sparring. Mm. Normally, when I first got to, uh, in New York, landed in New York, and uh, when I had my first school, a lot of people came to school is because of uh, how to call it. It's a curiosity. Yes. Curious. Yes. Because Bruce Lee got a big name. Right. Everybody know Bruce was uh, teaching Wing Chun. Yes. And later on, they changed to uh, he changed to uh, Chicken Do. Right. Correct. But for years, he been teaching Wing Chun. Yes. And uh, and he's passed away. I was there since seventy three, seventy four. Something oh, so like it was that. Just, it's just gone. Just yeah. And Soon people after. very curious. How Bruce Lee like. Right. And what kind of style, you know, Wing Chun is. Yes. And they're not really against Wing Chun or against me or something. Right. They're just curious. Curious. They wanted to try it out. Yeah, we'll just... try it out. Right. And when you have a school, hey, you can't try it out. Yeah. Because if I did hurt you, you hit me. You look and bad. And you know, no, not you look bad. I get hurt. Right. Because they're all big guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so there's only one choice. No, I don't try it out. I can show you. <laughs> right. You want to try it out, you go for real. Yes. There's only the way. Yeah, I have, uh, in the very beginning, it's tough yeah. because I've never seen people fight like that. And uh, after a few times, you start catching the idea. Yeah. Actually, it's not much different. You have two hands, two legs. Exactly. You, you're not going to have three legs, three hands, so no big deal. So I remember you telling me some of these guys were very fast with the sidekick. Uh, that one time I get hurt real bad. Right. But during the fight, you don't feel the pain exactly. that bad. Yeah, it hurt my rib. Right. But it's just because my reaction is not used to react to that kind of motions. Yeah. But once you think about it, actually, no big deal, same thing. But just the way they stand it, the way they use the leg, 
the angle is a little different. Yeah. It makes no difference. But once you understand it, then you just cover yeah. the space and then easy. Easy. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And um, see, mm -hmm. for why do you think nowadays there are so many Wing Chun interpretations? Well, I think that the reason is the people learning martial art nowadays are different with the old days. Nowadays, people are so busy making a living, or schoolwork is a lot of schoolwork for the kids. Yeah. Those days, people are committed almost every night they were there, training. And the Sifu know each other very well, teaching the same thing, everybody, same time, join the same time, you know, for years. But nowadays, people are so busy, and they can't commit such time every week, every month. So that's one problem. The main problem still lies about on, uh, how to call it? See, when somebody tells you a story, you tell pe 10 people the story. And after you tell, finish the story, you want, two pe you want the 10 people to repeat it, the story. And they, they remember the story. But sometimes they all will all, always interpret it a little bit differently because the way they've grown up, the way they the socialize, the yeah. background, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody have a different idea what he was told. Exactly. So he interpreted it differently. So he explained it differently. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, nowadays, people learn a few weeks, a few months, and they become a teacher. Right. Uh, Not really qualified to teach. And they do whatever they don't know, they make it up. That's a big problem. And the worst thing is, they don't have the experience on applying it. Yes. They just think, hey, this should work. If I do this, this. It's just theory. Theory. It, it's not really a theory. It's yeah. they think this yeah. way will work. Yeah. Talk but fighting. In, yeah. <laughs> right. But in reality, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't once, happen Once you get way. punched in the face, then reality kicks in. Yeah, because fighting is to take two to tangle. Yes. Take two to fight somebody. Yes. I mean, you know, he has his own mind. Right. And uh, everybody's mind is a little different. Exactly. And you think he would do that. Each person is different. And what do you do under, under the stress? Someone's yeah. coming at you. So, Sifu... That's subconscious fear. With how can we... Uh, in your words, explain to the viewers what is applied Wing Chun? What's the difference between applied Wing Chun and other Wing Chun out there? Or? I don't know other people. I don't care. But what I emphasize is what actually the applied Wing Chun, the name, wasn't start with me. You know them, the, the old students, when I was in New York yeah. and in Virginia, and uh, because I keep saying to them, hey, you don't try it, you don't know it work or not. Right. I always tell students, don't believe whatever I said. Yeah. You know, because I want you to use your mind, own mind, to consider, yeah. is it possible? Yeah. See, the problem in the Western world the people who learn martial art and different with people in China today, even in Hong Kong, or the Chinese people. Because Chinese, we believe in the, the, the culture is respectful yep. for the Sifu. Yep. When you're respectful, they don't, ask, they don't doubt the teacher. Yep. They don't doubt. And they sh shame to ask questions, right. which is totally wrong. And most students learning martial art is they copy the sifu, what to do, how they do it. 
which is also wrong, very yes. wrong. Yes. When you copy somebody, you're never able to complete, copy 100%. Agreed. Yeah. And then when you're second and third person, fourth person, the fifth person, everybody not the, exactly the same. Yes. By the time you go to the further down, it's totally different. Yeah. See, with martial art, every style is a good style. It depends on the person. And the most important thing is you have to, the person who learned the martial art, he has to learn each of the mo motion or the principle behind it and the idea of doing it and the reason of doing that particular technique. You know, you have to understand it. Exactly. You don't just guess. People are just guessing because they don't ask the question. They just guess. Yes. And that's why everybody is different. Once you understand, as you say, Sifu. Then once you understand, use your way to do it, you're better than your Sifu. Yeah. And that's the best way. And that's the best way to evolve yes. the system. Just like I said that uh, when somebody asked me, you know, you know Wogawai asked it. Yes. He said, uh, is Yiman, can we call Yiman uh, grandmasters? Mm. I said, why not? Even though he is not the one who invented this style, even though he may not, he, he did not conquer the whole world with mm. the martial art. Mm. But the point is, he teach somebody, he able to teach somebody same thing he learned and better than he is. Right. That is a grandmaster. That's a grandmaster. That's a great teacher. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, Sifu, how would you say your teaching has evolved with, not as a practitioner, but as a teacher, as a Sifu, when you were teaching in the 70s, maybe the 80s, the 90s, and now? Has it evolved a little bit with how you teach or what you teach? Mm, no. No? I, all the same thing every year. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all these years. Yes. It's only one thing that I start realize the best way to teach somebody is to let the student teaching somebody else. Right. Because it's like teaching yourself again when, exactly. when you express it. I tell you, that opens your mind. Yes. That's why you insist student, I teach you something. No, you, now you teach him. Right. Then when you start teaching him, then you find out, hey, there's a lot of things I'm missing. Yes, yes. And sometimes your student will ask you questions you've never thought about. Right. And then also when you're teaching somebody else, because he's not as good as you are, you're not under pressure when you work out with him. Uh -huh. So you'll be more perfect. Yeah. When you work out with somebody else, make better than you, faster than you, are better than you, you're under pressure. You may not be able to do it perfect. Yeah. So many, many, many reasons. And that, I think, that's the best way to teach. Yeah, there's a benefit behind yeah. that. Yeah, a lot of benefit behind it. Yes. Um, and uh, so just quickly, see for, for a student, how much do you think a student should train Chi Sao, fighting drills, because I know many people just focus on Chi Sao alone and they think that they're going to become a great fighter with just that. <laughs> yeah. So how would you say a student should train, you know, maybe 30%, 30%, 30 or 40? What would you say to how a student should uh, take their Wing Chun training? Well, it's not how many percent a student learn certain thing. Mm -hmm. Every individual is yes, different. Absolutely. And uh, the way I taught also, each individual, I would force, I mean, I would push a little different. Uh -huh. As far as Chi Sao, everybody get the wrong idea because when they talk about Wing Chun, the first thing they, in their mind, came to their mind is Chi Sao yeah. or chain, pun chain punches. Yes which is wrong. Chi Sao is the most important step 
in learning Wing Chun. Yes. But it's not everything. Chain punches is important, but it's not everything. Yes. But you just focus on that, forget the rest the most important thing. Exactly. It's no use. Right. For example, the, the Qi Sao is most important, when I say most important, is because this is the key of Wing Chun. Yes. What is the key of Wing Chun? Wing Chun, number one, you, we do not against power against power, force against force, which can prove to you free in Qi Sao. Exactly. You can find that in Qi Sao. And uh, also, the the in theory, in Wing Chun, the most important thing is how to cover it instead of blocking, which is different. Exactly, yes. Blocking is you see somebody attacking you, your eye catch it, yep. pass the message to your brain. Yes. Your brain will tell your body how to coordinate right. to go against it. Yes. So you're always one step behind. But no, I don't try it out. I can show you. <laughs> right. You want to try it out, you go for real. Yes. There's only way. Chi Sao can help you to learn how to cover. Before you get hit, you know which space you have opening. You just cover it and counter immediately. Same time, simultaneously. Simultaneously. Yep. So that will help you out one step ahead, half a step ahead. Yes. That's why Chi Sao is so, so important. important. But a lot of people getting confused that Chi Sao is just to learn the sensitivity. Right. Once you get contact, then you know how to react. Believe me, you try with Mike Tyson. You touch <laughs> his arm. <laughs> Let's touch arms with Mike Tyson. <laughs> you, got a, you got a feeling. You know? <laughs> yes. it's, that's not reality. Yes, yes. That's a thought. Yes. Which Chi Sao is not good at that. Now, for example, Chi Sao is like. Um, yeah, it's the most important. Like you learn about mathematics. Yes. Minus, plus, multiplication, very important. You don't learn that, you don't know any mathematics. But that's not only mathematics, not only multiplication. Yes. There's much more. You got trigonometry. Algebra. Algebra. Yes. Uh, Advanced math. So many things. Yes. So, is that mimetic? Yes, that's mimetic. Yes. But you still need the basics. The basics. Yeah, yeah. So you just don't say, I learned today, I learned addition, subtraction, multiplication. Oh, I'm master of yeah. mathematics. Yes. Come on. Like, like I've heard people say, I do the Silim Tao every day for 50 years. Uh, for ex Silim Tao is like A, B, C, D. Exactly. You, you practice. To write A, B, C, D for 20 years. Yeah. You're going to write English? You're yeah. going to write poetry? Exactly. You're going to write a storybook? Come on, man. I mean, this A, B, C, D. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sifu, um, final uh, thoughts. What would you like <clears throat> your legacy, your Wing Chun contribution to be with all of us that follow you? What would you like Wing Chun to evolve into? It's not how. I like people to involve too. I think that the, see, a lot of things, uh, the world are keep turning, pro progressing. Yes. Before we use horse. Yes. Then we have bicycle, we have car, now we have plane, we yes. have rockets. Yes. Yes, people are smart, getting better every day, improving every day. The problem is martial arts is getting downwards every day. But that is our culture. That is how do you call it something that our history. People are so smart. We're not smarter than the old days. Not because we're not smart. Because we don't need it. We rely on other things, yeah, on technology. Yeah, we don't need it. And, yes. You just like choreography. Yes. You write Chinese. Now you can put in a computer. Yeah, you can computer, type the word, and and that's it, it you know. Yeah. You don't need it. Yes. But why is people st start still working on it? Yes. Like 
Art form. Art drawing. Yes. You draw a picture, beautiful. Yes. Hey, we take a picture with the camera. You exactly. don't need that. Exactly. But why are we still doing it? You know, not because we're not better than they are. Hmm. They are better than us. We never get better than they are because they spend more time with it. Right. Yes. But all I need hope is to keep the culture or keep the history to those people who is good at it. Yeah. So we keep it. Keep the flame alive. Yes. Yeah, keep it alive. And, and I believe, yeah. especially since the pandemic, yeah. I think our training helps students yeah. with their mental health, with the physical health, and learn how to fight. Yeah, well, nowadays, nobody wants to fight. Yeah. I mean, you go to fight, you beat somebody up, you go to jail. Exactly. Somebody beat you up, you go to hospital. But it's good to have the confidence, at least, that you can... I tell you, yeah. that's the best payoff, right. is confidence. Absolutely, 100%. When I know I can handle it, Exactly. you know, it's confidence. Yes. But the thing is, a lot of people... The, get the wrong idea. The, before they get better, or before they know how to handle themselves, they are afraid people doesn't know, so they keep promoting themselves. Yeah. But you have nothing based on. Yes. You know, like a rich person, when you don't have money, you want to show off you have money, nice shirt, nice you. Know. But when you have money, you don't when want you people have, to you know you have yeah, money. You don't need to yeah. show. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a how it works. I mean how the worlds are going on now, yes, today. Yes, You know, yeah. they know a little bit, they start showing off everywhere. Eh, yeah. We see that happen time and time again. Yeah, there's, they're overconfident. Yes. <laughs> when you tell a lie one or two times, they'll believe you. When you tell a lie for the 100th time, they start believing <laughs> themselves. Exactly, mm -hmm. it happens that way. Yeah. So, Sifu, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to have this interview, this conversation with me. I know it means a lot to me and it means a lot to a lot of people out there, yeah. students from all over the world. So thank you so much. Okay. And yeah. uh, that's it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Sifu. All right, thank, thank you. you. Okay. okay, guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with a friend. And guys, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of material there to keep you busy training and taking your Wing Chun to the next level. If you haven't already, check out my online academy. It's umauniversity.com.au. There's a free introductory applied Wing Chun course you can check out and learn from those videos as well. Having said that, I'll see you in the next one.